Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Power Yoga. Child's pose. Start simple. Tips to the big toes together. We always start with what's called an integration series. So everybody's just kind of getting in their yoga mode right now. You guys do a really good job of it before I even come into the room. That's one of the things I really like about, especially these Saturday morning classes. Yoga is your attitude. Some of y'all wearing Fitbits or watches or things like that. I really don't let people watch wear those in the room. If you want to take them off, that would be great. If you have an opportunity, I'm not going to make a battle, though. So get a good grip. Walk your hands out. Let me see the quality of your downward-facing dog in your child's pose. It's a breath exercise. It becomes a yoga practice. When it becomes a breath exercise, it begins with the inhale. Take a long, slow, huge inhale through the nose. Make the lungs as big and full as you can. Feel the breath. Hear the breath. And exhale into your yoga practice. Like I'm gently pulling or pressing your hips back towards your heels and down towards the floor. I want you to feel length, space out of your shoulders, and just bring awareness to breath. Cultivate an awareness of breath. Eyes on drishti, move with the flow of the class, and big muscle groups support strong postures. This is an athletic system of yoga, especially if we do just a basic power class today. So I want you to be in your postures without struggling, without forcing. Use resting postures as necessary. If you don't have to, that's great, but that's not a goal in the class, is to get through the class without using resting postures. I want everything you do to be your best. Your best child's pose right now. When we come to the hands and knees, your best hands and knees posture. Your best down dog. Nope, not yet. I didn't say that. You're not listening to me. <laughs> Everything's going to be your best. So the basic postures are important. Like I just, I just said hands and knees, and about three of you got up. Stay with my dialogue, listen to my dialogue, and be present with me. That means you're somewhere else. You're already ahead of the ball game. You're already doing down dog. You're already doing up dog right now. This is just child's pose, everybody. Take a long, slow, huge inhale through the nose. Make the lungs as big and uncomfortably full. And exhale. All the tension away from the body and all the tension away from the mind. And stay right there. Come to a hands and knees position. Stay right in that space. Hands and knees is a posture, so some of you need to bring your knees a little wider, a little closer. Knees under the hips, hands under the shoulders. Little things matter to me. Exhale, round your back and look into your navel. And that's all you've been instructed to do. So all you're doing is rounding your back, eyes open, looking into your navel. No breath in the body. Make this uncomfortable. Slowly inhale. Take a long, slow six-second inhale, opening your chest and pushing the buttocks up in the air coordinating the breath and the movement. Be a little uncomfortable here. His lungs are so full. And slowly exhale. So don't be in a big hurry. Use the full six seconds, just like we're going through our A series together. Inhale. So like a wave. Be part of the wave. Exhale. So this is happening from your core. From your middle back, inhale like I'm pulling a string from your solar plexus down to the floor. Exhale, the string's in your middle back. That's where it starts. So the motion starts like I'm lifting a string up in your middle back. That's the first thing that moves. Inhale, we're almost done. Get lost in your breath today. Exhale. Inhale for the last time. Exhale. Stay there. Let the breath return to normal. Look into the front mirror. Engage your core. Third eye drishti, if you can see yourself, it's a deep room. Find somebody's costume, something you can look at. You have to have a drishti. Bring your right arm forward and left leg back. So again, sometimes in a deep room or all kinds of funny environments, you need to create a drishti. You need to find one. Anything can be a drishti. A drishti is a mindless gazing spot. It's just somewhere to focus your mind. So long and strong right now. We've got enough room to bring it out. Open it up to the side. Tricky posture. Anybody think this one's easy? Just yell out if you do, because I'd love to hear. 
I think this is really tricky. What's the trick? Nope, bring your leg forward. You're not done yet. What's the trick? You're lifting your body weight into gravity. <laughs> That's the trick. Reach forward, reach back. Use the big muscle group, support the posture, and do it. So that long and strong. You're just long and strong right now through core. Inhale up. Stay in the breath. So consistently in your class, you're going to move to a hard end feel, or inhale in this case to a hard end feel, or hard stop. That's where your work's going to be in your class. And that's where maximum effort is, but without struggling or forcing, see if we can ease the door open a little on that hard end stop. And hands and knees. You've got to continue to breathe there, guys. Engage your core first. A lot of y'all are holding your breath there. Left arm forward, right leg back. I don't have to see it. I can feel it. Third eye drishti. It's really an interesting thing. If, if, when everybody holds the breath, there's the, it's like the energy in the room kind of stagnates when the breath holds. Long and strong. Molly's got the feeling. So really engaging your core. Beautiful and beautiful and beautiful. It's like you're doing a plank right now. Big muscle group supporting a strong posture. That's one of the reasons we start with this and bring it out to the side. Also, you get that feeling of lifting to lengthen here. So there's a few things that I want you to get from this integration posture that you're going to be practicing throughout the class. This principle of lifting to lengthen. Big muscle group supporting strong postures. Going to that hard end feel without struggling, without forcing. We're getting all that out of this posture right now. Strong posture. Be determined to stay in it. And reach forward and back. Square the shoulders first to the mirror. So engage your core and just get, I want you to be long and strong right now. That's all. As long and flat as you can get to the ground. Inhale up. Lift the whole thing. Being intentionally repetitive. Going to that hard end feel. Hard stop and just working it. Without struggling, without trying to rip the door off the hinges. Every inhale, just see, can you ease it a little more open? Every inhale, you're trying to ease it open. Hands and knees looking in the mirror, not at the floor. Tuck the toes and press back to down dog. First down dog of the class. I'm not going to say of the day. A lot of you have done down dog already, I know. I would have done a few down dogs already, definitely, if I were taking this class. Some basic postures, feel them. So I just want you to stretch your mat long and down dog. That's all, again, that's all you've been instructed to do is just down dog. So many times people right here, you're already thinking about something else you're going to do in the class or something you've done or trying to walk it out when we're not walking it out yet. I just want you to practice down dog. Pivot to a plank, looking forward in transition. Let's have a clean transition, please. Left hand to center, left knee on the ground under the hip. Look at the tip of the right thumb and rotate the right hand up. We've got a nice solid power class here today, guys. Got another black belt class. Lift through the right middle rib cage, and there's not anything wrong with you. Look at the tip of them. Spread your fingers. Lift up out of that. I'm so glad you didn't go. Flatten your back out. So use strong core bondas, core muscles, to support your postures and advance. This is getting good, by the way. I've been leaving you alone, but you're doing your work. It's refining. We refine by doing. Draw the abs and the middle ribs in. My little five-year-old daughter is such a lesson to me in life. Refined by doing, right? Lift it up. Allison, that's beautiful. Re extend your arm more, though. Extend your arm. Perfect. Bring your foot down and hand up. Look back up to the tip of the thumb. Lift through your right middle rib cage. Can you flatten your back out, Ryan? You've got to do core, core bondas. And looking forward, not at the floor, rotate your right hand down. Replace the left hand with the right. Bring your right knee on the ground. I know I usually tell you that. Look at the tip of the left thumb and rotate up. You guys are good at this. You shouldn't have to look. That's why I have you usually look down. You, you, I've got, again, I've got a really, really experienced class here today at this yoga. So own your postures. Make your shit stick, right? Look up, lift up, lift through your left middle rib cage. If we learned anything from President Trump, it was that, isn't it? Make your shit stick. And advance the posture. Well, you got to admit, he's good at something. Lift your leg up nice and high. He made his shit stick. Lift it up, lift it up. Fall back if you want to fall. Fall back if you want to fall. Allison, that really is just solid. There's something about the angles here. They're just perfect. And bring the foot down and hand up. Get a good knife edge of the foot in the floor. Chin in the shoulder. Look at the tip of the thumb. Lift through the left middle rib cage. Flatten the back. Stay in your breath, stay in your posture, not anticipating release as part of the class. Rotate to a plank, looking forward, not at the floor, engage your core. How's this posture? 
Half of you are already in low, in low hold in your mind. How's this posture? Lower slowly. Move the body forward. Chaturanga. Up dog. Inhale. Down dog. Exhale. So the biggest challenge that this class is going to have is that most of you all know this class really, really, really well. So you've got to stay present with me and not be doing what we're about to do. You're at this, you're at this point in the maze. And I'm probably about to mix everything up. In fact, everybody, lay down on your back. Yep, flip right over on your back. You guys are too good. Sorry. <laughs> Bring the knees into the chest, stretch your legs up to the ceiling, and reach up to your toes. I'll tell you what I will do, though. I'll, kill, I'll turn the heat off while we do abdominals. How's that sound? L reach up to your toes. Reach up to your toes. I taught other things before I taught yoga. So I don't want you to bring your toes to the front mirror. Like, it's like your legs are on a wall. Everybody bring your heels onto the wall. You're on a wall. So there's a 90 degree angle between your lower abdomen and the ceiling. There's a pane of glass that's going straight up there. I don't want you to break that glass. In any, in any of these ab exercises we're about to do, and we're going to do a couple of them, I don't want you to break the glass. But I do want you to reach up and try to touch your toes and really engage your just one, All you're doing is just one contraction, just reaching up, reaching up, reaching up. If you're doing it right, you already got a good burn going. Okay? If you're doing it right, get the bottom tips of the shoulder blades off the floor and squeeze your abs. Now, like there's a weight on your heels, and you're just going to, a little lightweight, nope, a lightweight, now reach to them, up. I want you to push your heels straight up to the ceiling. Without breaking the glass, you're not pulling your legs forward towards your body. You're not pulling your legs forward towards your body. So if you're really doing this, do you feel it? Because you sure should. Bring your left heel to one inch off the ground and keep reaching up. Now I'd like you to change the reach to the back of the yoga room and notice that you can come up higher. Reach to the back of the yoga room and bring your upper back way up off the floor now with your abdominal muscles. Squeeze and engage them. So the bottom tips of the shoulder blades should be off the floor right now. I'd like everybody to imagine I'm putting thumbtacks under your shoulder blades as far as I can get them under there without you lying on them. Do not lie down on them. They're just short little pulses up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, squeeze and hold in the high position. You've all got bloody backs right now. Let's do it again. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold in the high position. Hold in the high position. Hold, hold, hold. You're almost done. Three, two, three. This is it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Squeeze and hold in the high position. Open your eyes and be present. Squeeze it. Hold it. Switch your legs with the squeeze on. Woo! How you doing? Pick it back up. So if you release the posture, that's fine. Legs straight up to the ceiling for everybody. Legs straight up to the ceiling. Legs straight up to the ceiling. Reach back up to your big toes. Reach back up to your big toes. Bottom tips of the shoulder blades up off the floor. Do not bring your legs forward. Push your heels straight up. You're bringing your legs forward. You are bringing your legs forward. Heels up. Heels up. Bring your, what is it, left heel to one inch off the ground. Opposite heel to one inch off the ground. Now reach to the back wall and bring the back up higher because now you know you can do it. So it's just the way the body works, guys. You're able to lift the upper back up higher. Are they burning? Because they should be. Lift up higher. Let's this is all we're, we're going to do this so quickly. This is all we're going to do today. This is all the abs we're going to do. Get your back up. Thumbtacks under the back. Please do not lie down. I have short little pulses. One, two, three, four, five. Squeeze. Six with me. Seven, eight, nine. On the count. Hold. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Stay on my count. Hold in the high position. Squeeze them. There's no blood out of anybody's eyeballs yet. Three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is important. Hold. Keep the squeeze on in the hold. Keep the squeeze on in the hold. Switch with the squeeze on. Try to stand it with me. Pick it back up if you came out. Stand it with me. Reach to the back wall. Go. One, two. Don't think. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Stay with me. Two, two, stay. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold in the high position. Stay with me. You're done in a moment. Switch your legs. Reach to the back wall. Get your back up off the wall and switch to the wall. Everybody, backs up high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Keep the back high. Two, gun. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, nine, squeeze, switch your legs. Switch your legs again. Switch them again just for kicks. 
Bring your knees into your chest and release your back. What would it be like if there was none of that self-talk there? If it was just like any other yoga posture. I said, release the back, and you went into a back release. Oh, my fucking God. Did I say that was all the abs we were going to (laughs) do? Everybody stretch your legs out. Arms on the floor. Dead pose. Palms up, eyes open. Dead pose. Palms up. Set to Bandhasana bridge pose. Bend your knees and bring your heels up towards your hips so you can barely touch your heels with your fingertips. Bring your heels just a little bit wider than your hips. Just a little bit. So everybody, that's, that, no, that doesn't change. Any, everybody should barely be able to touch your heels right now with your fingertips. And then push your hips straight up to the ceiling as high as you can. And push your tummy up to the ceiling. So really drive like you're on a leg press. Drive your hips. If I came around and picked you up, do I have that hard end feel? I'm looking for that heart. You got it. I'm looking for that heart and feel. And then like I'm pulling your, your chest forward to your chin. That's the heart and feel I'm looking for. I can't tell without touching sometimes. So pull the, like I'm pulling your rib cage forward now towards your chest. Pull, pull, and press up. So stay this high. If you start to collapse at all, come back down and come back into it when you can. Do not collapse the posture. Bring the right knee up nice and high. Just your knee up. Right. If it doesn't collapse, you bring your right knee up. If it collapses, you do not do it. Stay where you are. I did not tell anybody to extend their leg up. And now if it does not collapse you to the floor, extend your right leg up. If the right leg extension is lifting the hips and not collapsing the hips, you do it. If the weight of the leg is collapsing the hips, you should have your knee bent or foot on the floor. And I've got about five people that that would apply to right now. So there's a feeling of pushing away and reaching away that's creating space that I'm looking for. Bend the right knee, bring it down, make sure your hips are high with both feet on the floor, and do the other side, left knee up, just left knee up. Do not extend the leg, just bring your left knee up. Keep the hip, drive your hips up. If the hips collapse at all, you can't do it. Extend the left leg if the feeling is lifting the hips with the extension and not collapsing the hips. The feeling is lifting the hips with the extension and not collapsing the hips. That's beautiful, but I really want you to push through your heel here. Push through your heel there. Mid, drive your middle ribs forward. You're not done. Drive your middle ribs forward. Keep your hips high. Bend the knee. Come down cleanly. Get a good bridge. Hips up. Chest forward. Let's stay in bridge. One vertebra at a time from the neck start to come down, lifting the hips as you're flattening each vertebra. So you're doing a really strong pelvic tilt by the end. Come down slowly until the very last thing to come down onto the floor is your tailbone, your coccyx, and then release the legs down. Palms up. Close your eyes. Doing dishes has more to do with yoga than that. There's my well-trained room. Mm. So I can't be the only one that actually feels that. Y'all feel that? (laughs) That's what's special about what we do here. Feel that? Let go of any struggle. Let go of any expectations of anything that you're going to do. One breath at a time. You're one posture at a time. Your very best. Slowly open the eyes. Inhale your arms over the head. Flex your feet back. Cross the thumbs. Dive for the toes. Double pump. Double exhale. Forehead to the knees. Downward facing dog. I was going to stand you up, but that would be mean. Down dog. It would be just kind of mean, right? So I want you to feel your core in your class. You always should. But I used to start class with abs often because I, I just really – bring your feet wider, hip width. I just really want you to feel – thank you for the wrist correction. I really want you to feel your core here in all the postures, including down dog. But what's important to me in down dog is you feel like you're stretching your – you've got a good hand lock. You feel like you're really stretching your mat long, pushing out of the upper back, reaching the heels to the floor. We've got a nice socket for the shoulder to sit in, sliding the shoulder blades down the back. Just a little bit. It's just a little move to lock the shoulders in the socket. It's not really there. It's kind of applied. Wrapping the lats around towards the chest. Again, just down dog. That's all we're doing right now. Not impatient to do anything else. 
just because it seems like it would feel good to me, go ahead and walk your hips out here. Was I right? Go ahead and walk the hips out a little bit. Right heel, left heel, up and down. Just walk them out. That's all we're doing is just walking it out. Pivot to a plank, looking in the front mirror. Move the left hand to center. Bring the left knee on the ground under the hip. Look at the tip of the right thumb and rotate your right hand up. Tip of the thumb, drishti, lift it through your right middle rib cage. You guys are too good. I was just going to do a simple set class, and everybody's like, well, I can do that with my eyes closed. And I think about one breath. Lift about the right middle rib, lift through your right middle rib cage, flat on the wall. And just stay right here. So maybe all we do today is this. If you're thinking about advancing the posture, you're not practicing the posture we're practicing right now. That's a different posture. And advance it. <laughs> lift the leg up, right, wrap your right lat around towards the chest. So this is really nice yoga practice I'm watching. And one of the things that I'm seeing that's your focus, everybody knows this yoga, that starts with the focused mind. Eyes are on drishti, y'all are caring about what you're doing. If you're on your razor's edge right now, so is everybody else. Stay on it and lift your leg up. Core is active. Foot down, hand up. It's not just you that's working hard right now, folks. It's everybody's best. Rotate the right hand down. Replace the left hand with the right. Bring the right knee on the ground. Look up to the tip of the left thumb. Tip of the thumb, drishti lifted. So just strong here. So it's a focused posture. We're doing it again to get you nice and focused. Spread your fingers. I want you focused on your drishti. We didn't advance it on the other side, did we? We did? Oh, advance it. I didn't mean to advance it. I didn't intend to. I just wanted a nice focus. So still focused posture. So we're bringing you back here to regain your focus. You're just kind of starting over at the beginning of a standing series. Not being in a hurry to rush through postures. And bring your foot down and hand up. Look up to the tip of the thumb. Rotate to a plank, looking in the front mirror. Engage your core. And press back to downward facing dog. Warrior one, inhale the right leg up. Lunge the right foot, drop the left heel. Inhale the arms out, back, and up. Hips and shoulders square to the front mirror. We've got some nice pro practice in here. Biceps with the ears, looking at the outside knuckle of thumb. Gaze up. If you have a healthy neck, the gaze is the outside knuckle of thumb. This is a very bikram posture. It's tight. It's compact. Gaze, so I want a good grip. Yeah, I'm going to pick on you just a little bit. I always do. I just keep, want, keep, keep working it. Just keep working it. That's all you can do. I cannot tell by looking at that stuff at all. Exhale, warrior two. So again, I want, you, um, I want you working those hard end feels or those hard stops. Sometimes if I come around and touch you, I, just, I can't tell by looking at where you are and as soon as I feel I can tell. So make it nice and big, beautiful, beautiful, and beautiful, guys. Open it up. Nice big warrior twos. Using big muscle groups to support the posture. Your back left leg is a bonda. You're pulling back on the right heel, feeling that nice lift up out of the joints right now as you push away with the right leg. Core bondas are such a big deal in this posture, guys. Drawing the abs and middle ribs and lifting up. Open your shoulders more. I was just picking on you. Turn your palms up and reach forward over the right leg. Pull me back on the right heel. Keep, so stay in your breath. Stay in the burn. Don't bail out of it by trying to rest in the posture. Active is where you need to be. And reverse, the base does not move. This is from the waist up, the reverse. Reach space down the right side of the torso. Reach a compression down the left side as you wrap the right lat around towards the chest, feeling space through the middle thoracic spine. Continue to keep the squeeze and the lift. And I want you to feel a compression right now for the organs down the left side of the body as you reach the left arm down the left leg. Breath is support. Some of you popping out of that front leg a little bit. At least you're smiling while you're doing it. Yeah, you. Come on, make that bigger. You're popping out of that front leg. And cartwheel to a plank, looking in the mirror. Lower slowly, chaturanga. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. Inhale the left leg up. Lunge the left foot, drop the right heel. Warrior one. Round and round we go. Right hip forward, left hip back this time, lifting your pubic bone to your navel. Nice. Hips back, perfect. 
So I look at these postures from the ground up, their back foot, back leg lock. We want a bit good leg lock in this posture as well. Shorten that up a little bit, Sean, so you get your hips square. I, I want your hips square to the mirror, or it's square-ish. Some of you that's, that have tight hips, that's going to be a little bit much. But uh, thinking about bringing the right hip forward and left hip back, and really lifting pubic bone to navel, getting that nice space up out of your sacrum. And warrior two, exhale. Eyes in the mirror. So no wandering eyes in transition. The drishti is the outside knuckle of the thumb in warrior one. Come on into that, Steve. So your third eye in warrior two. If you can't see yourself in the mirror, again, we've got a deep room here. Find some back of someone's head, the back of their costume, whatever it is that's comfortable to look at, something ahead of you, but find a drishti. You need a good drishti. I like nice big warrior two. Some of you all are kind of pacing yourself here. That's not what this class is going to be about today. I want you to work to the point you need to use your dead pose. Make that even a little bit bigger and open your back shoulder up. Turn your palms up and reach forward over the left leg. You're doing just great. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. So not avoiding the burn, not sitting in it, but pulling back and squeezing. So it's like you're active. It's like you're squeezing into it instead of settling into it. Keep that squeeze to active in the breath. And reverse the yoga posture. On exhale, reach space down the left side of the body. Wrap your left lat around towards the chest as you pull your right shoulder back. Beautiful. The gaze for most of y'all is just looking past your bicep at the ceiling. Traditionally, when I was a kid, they'd have us look where we were pointing. That's way too much for my neck. They had all kinds of weird stuff with throat locks and everything you can imagine. And cartwheel back to plank posture, please. You're doing great. Lower slowly. Good chaturangas, please. Inhale up, dog. Exhale down, dog. I know it's going to seem like it, but it's really not, guys. I want you to love everything we do here. Plank on the forearms. Engage your core. Get your butt down. So we're going to do a short set of this. And we're just going to do one set of it, and it's not going to be a horribly long set of it. And if it's not something that's healthy for you right now to do, or you need a resting posture, it's yoga. You're going to use it. For those of you, so if, I'm going to be repetitive. If you're someone that needs a resting posture right now from the work we've done, this is a good opportunity to use it right now. It's a multi-level class. Not lifting the hips or collapsing the hips, Perla. I want you to be in your core here. And I want you to feel the burn. So this is not a competition to see who can hold it the longest. All right? It's, I want you to get into the burn in your quads, in your abdominals, and squeeze them just as tightly as you can and hold them. And this is all we're going to do is a short hold here. And just squeeze. If you start to feel the hips collapse, you come out of it. If you start to have to lift the hips up, you come out of it. And just lift through the thighs and just stay there. And if you have your knees on the ground, pull your abs and your knee, pull your elbows and your knees together, really engage. So knees on the ground, you can still burn your abs, guys. Pull it together and burn your abs. Come to a hands and knees. I'm not going to go through all the setup. I'd like you all to come to down dog on your forearms. So you can grab your opposite elbows. That's how far apart I want your arms to be. Put your hands out in front of you. Spread your fingers so the arms, the forearms are flat on the floor and push away. And just it's called they call it dolphin pose. To me, it's a, a variation of a down dog. I don't. I think if you were to talk to anybody that was really kind of traditional yoga, this would be a variation of a down dog. So push away. So I want your hands shoulder width apart. If you need to, you can interlace the fingers and push the, push the fists into the floor if you need to. But technically, I just like your hands to be shoulder width apart. And getting a good hand lock and a foot good forearm lock. Push the hips back and reach the heels to the floor as you gaze between your toes. Beautiful. I was going to have you bring the left foot to center and all that stuff, but I'm not going to. Come back to a hands and knees position. Tuck the toes. Downward facing dog. Triangle pose. Inhale the right leg up. Lunge the right foot, left heel 45 degrees. Straighten both legs as you lift, lengthen, and rotate open. Tip of the thumb, drishti. Lifting out of the bottom shoulder. Too much setup. Don't think that much. You're thinking way too much. So you... You learn to play tennis, you go, you have all your lessons, you all, all hit thousands of balls, and then you go play. 
this is kind of like we're not, we're not, I don't want you to think so much about what you're doing. I want your best version of a yoga practice here today. Your best version. If you want to look, really get into the postures in depth and there's other ways to do it, talk to me. Talk to one of our teachers and they'll tell you how to do that. Lift up out of the shoulder. It, I mean, it, it does happen in this room. But, I, but that's not the mode we're in. We're playing tennis. We're not thinking about how to learn to play tennis. And rotate the left hand and we're playing the guitar. We're not learning to play it. Square your hips. Lift the chest up so the back is flat. That's why we do all that other time. Take the right ankle with the left hand and reach straight up. Cla I used to be a really good tennis player, and Cloudy can't figure out why I won't play tennis because I like it so much. It's because I'd have to be playing five times a week and have somebody training me at least twice a week to play at the level that I want to play at. Bring the chin into the shoulder. It's a bit, that's, it's a, I don't just want to play tennis. I want to play my level of tennis. Bring the chin into the shoulder and lift up. Not just get frustrated beating myself. Tuck the shoulder under and look up and look up. Let's really go for it here. Get out of that bottom shoulder, Clouds, all the way up. You can do it. I've seen you do it. And rotate, thank you for working hard. Balancing airplane pose. Open half moon pose, don't be afraid of it. Open onto the wall. So there's a sweet spot. When I, find, when I see people being careful coming into it, that's a lot of times where they're losing balance. You've got a clean posture to clean posture. Get through that transition. Into the depth of the half moon, there is a stability, but ideally you're pushing away from the floor with your right leg so you feel a space out of your right hip. You're not sitting in it. Lift everything but the hip to get back to airplane. Lift the leg, lift the chest, lift the arms. Keep lifting the chest and leg and rotate. Lift and rotate. Lift the leg, lift the chest. Airplane, if you've fallen out and you're still in it, come to airplane. Everybody in airplane that's in it. Warrior one, right foot forward. Warrior two, arms over the legs, exhale. Make it big, make it beautiful. Squeeze your heels together. Bring the right elbow to the inside of the right knee. I'm presuming you made it big before you did that. Elbow to knee, looking up, lifting up, opening the shoulders. Elbow to knee, left shoulder back. Stack the left shoulder all the way over the right shoulder. Yes, I'm talking to you. And bind or half bind. If it's in your practice, it's not more correct to bind or half bind the posture, folks. It's wherever you're at today. It, it, it kind of drives me nuts when I see people coming here from other systems forcing the bind. Aaron, you're forcing the bind. <laughs> I'm talking to you right now. So we don't ever want to come out of a posture to go into a posture, to go deeper into a posture. That's not going deeper into the posture. There's a reason that it wasn't going into the posture, and you're ripping the door off the hinges. Extend. Sean, nice today. Always, really. Press back to big warrior two, squeeze the heels, make it big, make it big, squeeze the heel. If it wants to be bigger, let it be bigger. If you think I'm talking to you, I am. And cartwheel to a plank. Left hand to center, stack the right foot on top of the left and rotate the right hand up. Resistance, no resistance. So if you're encountering resistance, probably time to take a knee. That's, what's next? Struggle. <laughs> Advance the posture. This class isn't supposed to produce anxiety. It's supposed to relieve anxiety. It's just yoga. Just stay there today. Where's your, where's your work today? It doesn't ever matter what you did yesterday. Nice. Big toe banda. Keep it up. Keep it up. Hips up. Hips up. Chest open. Chest up. Please maintain this. Please maintain this. And rotate back to a plank. Nice fall. And lower slowly. Move forward. Take the right fall, folks. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. So when you're doing these postures correctly, some of these tricky postures, there's never going to come a day you don't fall out of them. Take the right fall. I encourage students to err in the right direction. That means take the right fall. If you did the right, do the left, please. Inhale the left leg up. Let's just keep marching today. Lunge the left foot, right heel. 45 degrees, half of 90. Straighten both legs as you lift lengthen. Anchor your left hand down, and as you're straightening your left leg, you're lifting your chest and opening the body. Bring the chin into the right shoulder, tip of the thumb, drishti. Long and strong. So you're lifted through your back right thigh right now. There's a little string on your hip pulling you back and drawing the shoulder blades forward. I'm looking for a tight triangle, ideally, between the left side of the body, the left leg, and the left arm. Reach just a little bit lower down to your ankle. And then I'm just going to push you over towards me a little bit. So there's more of a, I want you to feel a lift. That just, you feel the lift? There's a lift that happened that I'm looking for. 
and rotate the right hand. It's, it's subtle, but it's a big difference in all these postures. Square the hips and shoulders to the front mirror. Some of these differences are not huge. Lift the chest so the back is flat, but they make a big difference. And take the, ro rotate, you all know what you're doing. Take the left ankle and rotate up. Body follows the eyes. Folks, this is one of the most important postures in your yoga class to me. I, I wouldn't be able to do it if I didn't turn my head. You've got to bring your chin into the shoulder. If you really want to open up, ideally, eventually, right shoulder over left ankle, left shoulder over right shoulder, reaching straight up. Lacey's got it. Nice, Lacey. One more time, lift up and rotate on the wall. Nice also. And rotate the left hand down. That stance is getting pretty wide. Move into balancing airplane pose. You already knew it, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> got some well-trained yoga students around here, folks. Lift the chest. An open half moon. Just stay strong and stay focused and be determined to stay in your posture if you've learned to do it already. Lift the airplane. Everything's heavy. So you just have to think heavy. Coming back there, legs heavy, chest, everything's heavy. Now it gets heavier, rotate. It's just, it's just the way it happens. The leg gets really heavy and the chest gets really heavy. Rotate the arms up and just lift into gravity. And lift and be, breath is support. Lift and breathe. Back to nice airplanes. And I'd like everybody that's still in it to be in an air nice airplane. If you've fallen out, pick up the airplane and let's all transition together, please. Warrior one, move back. Nice yoga, guys. Warrior two, open arms over legs. Just warrior two, don't think. Too much thought, too much thought. <laughs> thought police. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, if it wasn't funny. <laughs> and left elbow to the inside of the left knee. Things are about to change really quickly, folks. Probably quicker than it has in the history of our kind. Push the knee back, bind or half bind. Technology has created a new world, and we are just seeing it begin to happen. Right? <laughs> it's just the truth. Keep the squeeze, keep the lift. Say goodbye to your cash. If you have cash, do something with it. Lift your chest and keep the squeeze. And extend. Extend, Lacey. Push back to Big Warrior 2. Come on into that, John. Knee forward, squeeze the heels. Knee, John, sit down. You're not too big. Sit down into it. Knee forward, more, more. Steve, tell him. He's too big. Cartwheel to a plank. <laughs> right hand to center. Stack the left foot on top of the right. Rotate the left hand up. Stay with me. Just, I know you're working hard. Just stay with me, folks. Tip of the thumb, drishti. Lift it through the left middle rib cage. Own it. Advance the posture. It's just a strong posture. Those of you that are hooking the toe, the four or five, it's just a really strong posture, guys. Push the big, starts with a good foot lock and then really drive the hip. Think wheel. Think, for those of you with deep, deep advanced variation, I want you to think like a wheel. Push the hips up and drive the chest forward and really get a good drive with your right leg to stay there. That's beautiful. You've never done it better. Stay right there, please. And rotate to a plank. Push that limit. Lower slowly to chaturanga. Fire your thighs, please. Up dog, inhale. Down dog, exhale. What do you think, balancing or no balancing? Balancing or no balancing, yes? Take a knee, everybody. Actually, Come to a hero pose. If you're already in a deeper posture stare, this is not a water break. Put the waters down. Round the hands over the knees. Lock your arms. So what's a nice hero pose? Let's start with simple posture. Virasana. Feet, knees, heels together. Hips on the heels. That's a variation. I don't want you to just stretch it. Round the hands over the knees. The arms are locked out so your spine is straight and the shoulders are relaxed. If this isn't comfortable, sit with your legs crossed. Sukhasana or with your legs out in front of you. And if you're in a deeper resting posture, stay there. I'd like everybody to simply to close your eyes and slow your heart rate and shallow your breath. <laughs> I'm just going to say that in a really simple way because that's what I want you to do. I want you to slow your heart rate and shallow your breath. There are many ways to do it. The most common way I teach it and probably the most effective way I can do it, one of the most effective ways, 
is just by visualizing what it feels like when my breath is slow and shallow and relaxed. And my heart rate is relaxed. But it's not what does the mind think it feels like. What does it feel like when the breath is slow and shallow and relaxed? And in metaphysics, which is kind of what we're doing, time doesn't matter. So we're not in a hurry for that to happen. The less of a hurry you can be in, the more effective it is. We want to settle into that moment, into that space we started with and the space we'll end with. We just want to settle back into that space here. We practice yoga until eventually we can sustain this level of consciousness all the time, folks. That's why daily practice is so important. Slowly open the eyes. Balancing. Standing pose. Let's do it. That was not a question. Balancing. Standing pose. If there's resistance to standing pose, stay down. Please hear me clearly. If there's resistance to standing pose, stay down. We might just do one balancing posture, and I'm not joking. We might just do one balancing posture. Probably not. Eagle pose. Inhale the arms over the head. Touch your palms together. Look up. Palms should be tight. Locked out arms. Right arm under the left arm with a nice tight Bikram grip there. Arms down. Elbows down. Sit down deep. This is a great hip opener. Push your butt back. Lift your chest up and bring the right leg up and over the left leg. We're about to bring a new class onto the schedule. We're going to call it restorative power yoga. Sit down a little bit deeper. I will be teaching one class a week, probably at 6.30. Lift the chest, sit back into the posture. Lots of hip openers, really 40 minutes or so of really deep opening after a little standing series, a little floor. Change, come back up. Inhale the arms up, long arms. Left arm under the right arm. Arms down, elbows down. Lift the chest as you sit down into your chair pose. Push the buttocks back behind you. Left leg up and over. Don't come out of a posture to go deeper into it. You get a nice base and maintain the base. Chest up, Allison. More and more and more. Now sit down. Yeah. Change. Come back up. Inhale the arms up. Relax your arms down to your side. Left hand reaches to the ceiling. Right elbow on the right hip. Palm up. Bring the right hand back behind you. Pick up the right ankle from the inside without twisting the wrist. Touch the knees together and kick straight back and reach straight forward. Open up your bows. Big, just big, beautiful bow. So I think I like both hands high. When you bring, when you bring that arm down, I'd rather you bring the body forward to match. So drive your body down and forward instead of bringing the arm down. And then lift and reach for your base. Standing pose. Standing pose. Look at yourself in the mirror and be with it, whatever it is. Don't look away. Be proud of the work you do here. Whether you're in a dead pose, a hero pose, a standing pose. Few care about themselves enough to work this hard, or the people in their lives, to work this hard. They want to take a pill, a yoga pill. Imagine the side effects. Right hand reaches to the ceiling. Left elbow on the left hip, palm up. Bring the left hand back behind you. Pfizer's new, no, new million, billion dollar pill. Touch the knees together. Bring the shoulders back and open up the posture. Open up your shoulders, chest up, big back bend. So reach. Sometimes when I'm deep in a standing bow, I'll try, bow, I'll try to reach a little bit almost too hard to make myself kick harder. If that's you, some of y'all could probably do that. If you've got a deep bow and you feel like you're there, reach a little bit harder and see if you can kick more into it. Kick more now. Kick, you got to kick harder than you reach always. Kick, kick, kick. Fall forward and come out nice reaching to the ceiling. Standing pose. Don't be in a hurry. Standing pose, please. Or wherever you are, or hero pose. Or dead pose, everybody. Dead pose. That was fun. And right about now, innocently ask yourself, are you hydrated? Looking at a pretty well hydrated yoga room today, folks. And I really never know what I'm going to get on Saturday morning, is the truth. <laughs> oh, if it were only funny. So let's all settle in now. Everybody affects everybody here. So union, right? Collective. 
That's what the word yoga means. The word yoga comes from a word huge. To huge means to join or mm, to marry or a union. Huge. That's what we do. When we settle into this dead pose together, we huge. We practice TM together, whatever. We, we're huging. We're entering the same space at the same time. When I tell you then the class to let go and fall, if you are falling into that space, that's still space that's never changed, we're all falling into that same space together. There really is only one space there. And it's just the truth. It's all the other stuff that keeps us from knowing that. Ego. <laughs> ego and ego. <laughs> really. And then more ego. Slowly open the eyes. We're still in dead body pose, folks. So eventually that's seamless. It doesn't matter if your eyes are open or closed in dead body pose. You can settle into that same space. I can function from that space, depending on what I have to do. Inhale the arms over the head. Flex your feet back. Cross the thumbs. Dive for the toes. Double pump. Double exhale. I am right now. And lie down on your stomach. I want to go right through spinal strengthening and not get stuck in the mud, guys. I know we've worked hard. Hands under the shoulders. Bhujangasana. Lock your legs out. Make a cobra's tail. So you, everybody but a couple of you all know this class, and the couple that don't, you're doing a great job. Squeeze your legs together. Straighten them out so there's no bend. Exhale through the nose, and inhale, pull. Look up and pull with the back. And So activate your legs, really strong legs. Pushing the feet into the floor is going to help you get into your low back muscles. Core strength in the back side of the body. No pushing with hands. Hands are on the floor giving your sacrum a little bit of stability. That's all they're doing. Pull the elbows back towards your hips and look up and inhale one more set of ribs up. Push a little teeny bit if you have to, but let's get nice and deep into the posture, please. Breathe it out. Breathe it out and stay there. That's your hard feel. And come down slowly. Don't bail out of that hard feel. Left ear on the ground. Look right. Dead pose. Didn't think I got nice all of a sudden in dead pose, did you? Let's keep working. Chin flat on the floor. Hands under the shoulders, slide the heels of the hands back to your hips, lock your legs out, make a good cobra's tail. Set it up, do it or don't do it. On inhale, push your chest up and lift your thighs up. I do want everybody to be very clear. I want you to work to the point you need to use dead body pose. Lock your legs out. Surrender is everything here. Squeeze them, squeeze them. So we're squeezing all the juice out of the orange right now. You're not saving it. Lock your legs and lift your thighs up and push your shoulders up and breathe. And down slowly, right here on the ground, look left, and release into dead body pose. A complete release. No memory of what you've done, no ex anticipation or expectation of what you're going to do. It's just dead body pose. That's the art of the art. Being able to be still in this moment. Chin flat on the floor. Let's keep it simple today. Hands behind the back, interlace your fingers. We're going to do our simple version. Got to do our spinal strengthening, guys. We don't, do, we don't do 50 spinal strength postures. These are really important. Give yourself to them. Squeeze your legs. We don't need to either. Bring your arms up high and inhale up. Squeeze. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Middle back strength. Lock your legs out. Lock your legs out. So I'd like everybody to try to straighten your legs all the way. Bring your arms up as high as you can and get a good grip. Stretch your shoulders open as well. Now everything up, everything up. Stay there, stay there. Bring your arms out to the side and lift higher as you do. Notice that you can lift higher, and as you're bringing them out to the side, lift higher. Look up to the ceiling, everybody. Look up. Hands out in front of you, shoulder width. Feet come to hip width. Look up, lift up. Come higher. Come higher under the pelvic girdle. Stay there. Stay there and breathe. Down slowly. Left ear on the ground, look right. Perfect. Chin flat on the floor, just perfect. Bend the knees, heels to the hips, grab your feet, thumbs with the fingers. This might be the last, bo the last strength posture we do, guys. I haven't decided yet. Push the soft part of the belly into the floor. Please treat it like it is. And extend both legs straight up to the ceiling. Kick the weight forward. 
All right, so we've got to get into the bow right away like standing bow. Some of you guys coming in kind of a halfway. That's where you're going to injure yourself. Just come right, clean posture to open up the bow, clean posture. It's smooth, but there's intent to get right into your posture, guys. Some of you didn't have it there. Some of my black belts didn't. If it's healthy for your neck, look up, go up. You can even relax your neck down more and a force it. Just drop it right down to your chest and come down slowly. Not that I agree with things that she taught, but right here on the ground. In that case, I would. So it's really kind of up to you guys if we do one more set of those last two postures. The person that I asked if we should do balancing or not said yes and then lied down in dead post. So I, I, <laughs> not, 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 not saying anything, just no right or wrong, just <laughs> that did happen. So <laughs> yes or no? Yes? Chin flat on the floor. Hands behind the back. Interlace the fingers. I heard three yeses in the room. Lock your arms out. Lock your legs out. Straighten your legs. Bring your hands high. Get a grip and inhale up. This is all we're going to do. We're not going to bring the arms out to the side. Boom, boom. Let's finish it, though. You don't want to leave it go. Hey, yeah, but we didn't do the last two postures. Squeeze the legs. Oh, y'all do that. Believe me, you do that. I have emails. I say mark them in red and say urgent. Up, 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 up. Arms out to the side like airplane wings. I changed my mind. Hands out in front of you. Shoulder width. Now lift up. Inhale up. Everything up. Everything up, everybody. And release. Left ear on the ground. Look right and let it go. In a moment. And let's finish. Chin flat on the floor. Bend your knees. Do it. Grab your feet. Thumbs with the fingers. Cloudy's over here going, I married this guy. The fuck was I thinking? Press the soft part of the belly into the floor and extend both legs straight up to the ceiling. They only think it's funny when I tell the truth. Kick it forward. So, guys, I want your pelvic girdle up. If you can get your pelvic girdle up and wait for it, do it. But it's with a strong kick. Hard and feel as you look up and pick your feet up and kick into the posture and open the chest. And down slowly. Right here on the ground. Look left. (sighs) Happy baby. Bottoms of the feet flat to the ceiling, ankle joints stack over the knee joints, pull the knees down towards the floor. Is there a reason you're doing that one leg at a time? If there is, it's okay, but I don't know what that reason is. Pull the knees down. If it is, it's okay. But do one side, do both sides though. I am a big fan of doing one to one side what you do to the other. If you have an injury, it gets a little tricky. But we really want to do to one side. Do that. If you play a sport or something that you've got to do it, it's a little bit different. Then we want to try to balance the body a little differently. And release the tension from the body first. Stretch your legs out. I'm not used to you being back here. I haven't picked on you once the whole class. Huh? Hmm. Must also mean it's been right, because I would have spotted you otherwise. Just dead pose. Just dead pose. Just dead pose. Inhale your arms over that, flex your feet back, cross the thumbs, dive for the toes, double pump, double exhale. Let's bring some life into the room. Back bends, cool downs, and we're done. Let's do them. Come to the top of the towel. Boom, boom. Energy back in the room like a bright light. Just either do it or do not. But if you're going to do it, do it. Stand on the knees. If you're going to do it, bring energy, bring life into it, and do it. And affirm you're going to do it. Lift through your thighs, support your sacrum with your hands, draw your low abs in, and inhale into the back bend. Inhale into the back, man. How's it feel? Good? <laughs> Look at that. You know what you're doing? I'd still do anti inflam and get some ice on there. Look back, go back. Always is preventative. Look back, go back. Look back, go out. Reach back if you want to reach back. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay in your breath, everybody back. Breathe through your nose. Breathe through your nose. Get the breath back to your nose. And come back up, lifted through the chest. Sit back, hips to heels. Dead body pose. Eyes open, dead pose. Why not a lot of heat today? Anybody tell me? You don't need it. We don't need it. This is the, it, we, it's more of a boot camp. Big muscle groups creating our own heat. We need the oxygen today more than we need to deal with heat. Heat's nice, though. It lets us get in a little deeper, right? And what else does it do? It makes it mental. 
It makes it yoga. You have to control your mind. That's what I like about the heat. You learn to control your mind. Don't even think that again, Claudia. One more big back bend of your choice. You got a nice release there. I teach to the whole room. There's a whole big room. Push your hips up, push your chest forward. Really drive. And when it's time to surrender, close your eyes and really, don't be in this limbo land thinking about why or whatever, it's just dead pose. Guys, when it's time to surrender, surrender. I don't, I don't care when that's time. There's been Bikram's classes that I've laid down through a good part of the back end of it and felt like I had a great class afterward. <laughs> Anybody relate to that? Moved great. I felt great. Just come on back down. Just feeling all the good stuff, the serotonin and dopamine and not the bad stuff, cortisol and epinephrine and how many people here run on adrenaline from time to time in your work life? A lot of y'all do. It's not good. <laughs> you can still do the same thing and not run on adrenaline and caffeine. Back release of your choice. How many people in this room get enough sleep? Ooh, there's one. <laughs> That's really where yoga starts, right? With the basics. All these just really basic, how do you eat, how do you sleep, how do you poop? Yeah, I know, it's funny to talk about poop, isn't it? When you have a five-year-old, it's just life. <laughs> it's, it's just life. Come to shoulder stand pose. But stay with me, folks. I'm trying to be entertaining right now to keep you with me. Stretch your legs up. It's really not my forte, so stay with me, or I'll have to get mean again. That's my forte. That's why they come, Claudia. Push your hips forward. I can't explain it. Stretch your legs up. Good at other things, too, you know. Plow pose. Don't force it, but find that hard and feel, Matt. Don't force it. Keep thinking hips forward to bring the feet down. Hips up and forward. Hips up and forward. Up and forward. Up and forward. And come back down. If you're doing a seated twist, just kind of, you know how to come into it. Roll right into it. Otherwise, bring the right knee into the chest. Straight left leg down. Bring the right knee into the chest. And twist. Bring the right knee across the body. Stacking the hips. It doesn't matter. I'm not really concerned about it. So bring either leg across the body. It doesn't really matter if we start right or left, but I'd prefer right. Bring that. So... I don't care if your knees all the way down or your shoulders all the way down. Different styles, different systems teach this differently. For me, if usually both my shoulder and knee are just a little bit off the floor is where I'm really feeling that nice opening in my body. But if they're both coming down, that's great. If you're not feeling a stretch here and that's happening, you need to be doing a different stretch on your side or seated twist. These twists are important. We want to feel the big twist. I'm going to say that again because I've got three of you that look like you're not feeling much. Curly, you'd definitely be in that category. Come back to center position. And same thing on the other side. Nice as usual. Ankle to knee contact, please. Bikram style in your seated twist. Right hand by the end. Go ahead and twist. Bring the left knee across. That's it. In, in your Bikram twist, bringing the left hand way back behind the body. So like a jack. And if you want to bind it, that's okay. But the... I'm, I want the chest up nice and straight. So if supporting it pushes the back up longer and flatter, I'd rather you have the support pushing the back up long and flat rather than the client doing this. That feels good? And come back to center position. Are you practicing yoga right now or are you lying on the floor in a yoga room? Releasing your back. It's different. Dead body pose. Close your eyes. You can leave your eyes open if you're Uber Bikram trained. Have them on a drishti. Don't let them wander. If you've been trained to keep your eyes open, that's great. Like I said earlier, eventually that's seamless anyway. I kind of encourage you to close your eyes a little bit. 
not really drifting off or spacing out, but just really bringing awareness to breath. If you've noticed, I say aware of breath, not thinking about breath. I don't think I ever say thinking about breath. We're aware of breath. It's a different thing to be aware of something than to think about something. Thought is the process, right? To be aware that something is is a different thing than to have process about that awareness. That's what keeps so many of us from hearing what's really going on around us. Seated in the self, in the heart, it's it is not in your head. What you're looking for in yoga is not in your head. It's in your heart, folks. It's a wonderful computer, the brain. It's not you. I'd like you to remember the earliest memory you have, earliest childhood memory, good, bad, whatever it is, the earliest childhood memory, what I want you to remember is an observer and a chooser that was in that moment. It hasn't changed from then to now. It's innocent. It's deep. And it's the self. And it's completely indifferent to whatever you did today in this yoga room. Always indifferent. Namaste.